Hi, I'm Tim Deegan. I'm the author of Make Fire, The Art and Science of Working of Propane. This is a book I wrote about how to safely build propane flame effects. It teaches you everything you need to know about propane, its properties, fittings, tools, and how to safely put them together to build some really exciting projects. Almost all flame effect projects can be broken down into structure, plumbing, and control. The fire mass tree project uses galvanized pipe and copper tubing as its structure with some corrugated tin to serve as decorative leaves. And then it has the copper tubing, half inch, and some hoses and brass fittings, and a five gallon empty propane cylinder uses an accumulator. I feed that off a high pressure regulator off a large propane cylinder. The control in this case is a 12 volt battery with a couple of switches controlling some 12 volt solenoid valves that open and close to release the propane vapor up through the flames which serve as pilot lights to create the bouche. Projects typically start out with drawings in SketchUp or some other 3D CAD program so you get an idea of relative sizes and a visualization of whether the project is going to work at all. I tend to try and get down to the level of actual plumbing fittings in that but I don't expect it to show the final file. So once I've gotten a good idea of what I'm interested in, I tend not to try and revise it over time. Typically the next thing I do in a flame project is create a diagram that shows all of the plumbing fittings that are going to go together. I really do like this to be very accurate. Uh, it needs to show what parts are required and that needs to go all the way down to the brass bushings or the adapters. I started out by bending some half inch copper tubing into a ring for a burner. I wanted three of these rings. I'm using a tubing roller which is a really wonderful tool. Each of the burner rings needed to be held to a central column so I decided to use rebar. I cut rebar to a proper length from a cross holding each ring in place. I'm going to weld it together later and weld a C-clamp to hold it to the tree's center column. The rebar had to have a way to be able to keep the ring from moving around. Since the ring was going to be actually a burner and have flames coming off it, I really couldn't afford to let it be, have any possibility of falling or moving off. So what I wanted to do was create a bend in the end of each piece of rebar so that on each side it took a 90 degree and would hold the ring in place. I used a MAP gas torch, or MAP Pro gas torch I should say, MAP's not available anymore, to heat up the rebar and then bend it down like this. That's a TS-8000 burns o -matic torch which I'm absolutely in love with, you see me using there. I had to make bends on each of the pieces. I did it by clamping it with a C-clamp to my welding table and then just bending it once it was hot. I didn't have a lot of budget for this project so I reused a half inch piece of galvanized pipe that was on a floor flange with a tank mount already attached to it. I wanted to be able to disassemble this project so I needed a way to connect the burners to the central pipe that I could connect and disconnect. C-clamps aren't perfect but they're cheap and I had a lot of them around so I w ground off the paint and welded the rebar to them as a means to be able to connect and move them up and down the central column of the galvanized pipe tree. Neither rebar nor C-clamps are particularly good metal for welding, but using flux core wire in my wire-fed Miller MIG welder let me put enough of a weld together and I felt confident that they would support the weight of the burner and a whole lot more. I welded both the rebar to each other and three points on the C-clamp. The rings were supposed to have a diameter of 32, 24, and 16 inches respectively. The top ring was too tight to turn without bending and breaking the half inch copper. So I originally used 3 8 inch uh, refrigerator tubing. But I had to put flare fittings on that and in the end I decided I didn't want to. So I took some of the half inch tubing and filled it with sand and put it in the tubing roller to be able to bend it tight enough without crimping it. Before brazing everything together, 
I did a test fitting of all the parts and put them together to make sure they were going to fit together the way I wanted. Once I saw that they all fit and they were the right lengths and everything was adjusted correctly, I felt confident to go back and start breaking. There's a lot of debate about brazing copper for use in fire effects projects. Um, it's specified in the National Fuel Gas Code that brazing copper is appropriate for pressure fittings, but it does specify that you use a very specific type of brazing material that doesn't have phosphorus, and you have to use a certain grade of tubing that has a certain wall thickness. I've decided after talking to a lot of people that I'll really only use copper tubing that's got brazed fittings for burners. That's because the burners themselves don't hold any pressure. They're open to the atmosphere. For the various fittings that I could take off and put in the clamp, I brazed each of them independently. Brazing doesn't take too long here using MAP Pro Gas with that TS-8000 torch. It's actually a pretty quick operation. Once you get things hot enough, if you've used flux correctly, the brazing material will start to flow fairly fast and go into the joint. For the big rings, I went ahead and brazed them all in place, moving them up one by one until I had everything brazed in exactly the positions I wanted. I'm really happy with the way the burners turned out. The rings are beautifully turned on the tubing roller. I was able to put a section at the top of the burner that will serve as the pilot light for the bushes, and then I was able to put unions between the big ring sections so that the whole thing will break down and not have to be stored as a giant assembly all by itself. The plumbing tree is an empty 20 pound propane cylinder used as an accumulator with a whole bunch of hoses and fittings wrenched and taped into it. To cut the jets, I used a triangular file and just filed away at the copper tubing until a tiny little slit was cut. If they get too open, I can always fill them with a little brazing material, or I can open them up a little bit more with a pinhead. I probably plumbed and re-plumbed this device three or four times by the time I was done. I have a habit of tearing things down and wanting to redo them. Always remember to take off all the yellow tape or pipe dope, clean it out, and put it on fresh if you're redoing a fitting. Before attaching all the various corrugated sheet metal leaves, I wanted to do a test of all the burners. I was pretty happy how they turned out. One's a little bit bigger than I liked, but most of them were the right size. You can see that I used uh, copper scouring pads attached with baling wire as a way to protect the jet from being blown out by the wind. It also added a kind of decorative touch to the whole thing. For the leaves of the tree, I decided to use corrugated sheet metal. This is galvanized, which if it was going to get too hot would be a problem because it would off gas from the zinc fumes, but I'm not really getting it anywhere near that hot. It serves to protect the material below, the accumulator, the hoses, and the plumbing. And I wanted to cut it into the appropriate shapes. This is something that I used the SketchUp model to help me understand the dimensions. Because I didn't really manage to get the top rings and the bottom rings and the middle rings all perfectly centered, I used two different sets of leaves. That way the angle between the top ring and the middle ring and the angle between the middle ring and the bottom ring didn't have to be perfect. It also made it look a little bit more like a tree if you're willing to stretch your imagination far enough. The leaves themselves were attached to the copper burners using baling wire. I drilled holes and ran the wire through and twisted it against it in the back. Everything had to be fireproof. Inspecting the tree before I lit it up for the first time, I had to make sure everything was there. The star on top, of course, is essential. And the coils made by the electric sheet metal cutter were perfect as fireproof tinsel. Finally, the moment of truth. I turned on the gas and lit each of the jets in turn. I was pretty happy at the way they lit up pretty consistently. I could make them a lot higher, but this seemed to be a good middle range for the height.
hard to believe that once upon a time people had lit candles on their trees because this tree certainly would have gone up in flames if any part of it had been flammable. Here comes the exciting part. Everybody ready? Yes! Boosh! We have Merry Firemass! I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of the ways I put together a flame project. If you want to learn a lot more about building flame projects, again, check out my book, Make Fire, the Art and Science of Working of Propane. Merry Firemass!